Hey gang, Matt with Atlas Precision Consulting. In today's video, we're going to start a new series focused around PORG or PO requirements generations, uh, which nobody says, everybody says PORG. Uh, in this video, we're just going to cover how to create a basic criteria so that way you can come back and easily run the same uh, purchasing settings each time that you want to run it. Uh, and I'm also going to touch on the factor tab a little bit. So we're going to come in here and we're going to put in a buyer ID. Now, buyer IDs can play a bigger role if you're using a buyer-specific purchasing. Uh, but in this example, we're not really using that on our suppliers. Location-based is essentially location ID means we're going to just be purchasing for one location only, and that's how we're going to look at it. Um, there is something for purchase groups, but we'll cover that in a different video, which allows you to purchase from multiple locations, ship them to individual locations, but also there's some options to bring them into one central location and then transfer them out of that uh, but that's a little bit more advanced than i really want to get into today's video uh, so we enter in our location and the other option you have here is how you want to filter down what items you want to look at your most common are going to be running it by supplier id or going to be running it by maybe purchase group id or a combination of any of these uh, for this video we're just going to put in a simple um, supplier ID. Now you do have the option to also do a supplier group, um, which I will cover in a different video. Supplier list, instead of doing a range, is essentially if you have two or three suppliers that you're always purchasing at the same time, you can put a supplier ID, comma, supplier ID, comma, and make a list. You can also do that for uh, some of the other items here, like a uh, product group list. Uh, but for our purposes, we're just going to put in one supplier. And that's all we're really going to focus on. Now you do have to have one of your requirement types. The most common is going to be your stock, including back orders. Now you can choose to also select some of these other ones. Obviously back orders are grayed out because it's included in this one up here. Uh, now you may not need to run direct ships and specials if you're allowing your users or expecting your users to create those directly from sales order entry. Um, I generally would recommend running those separately because they're not really going to be coming on the same shipment anyways. Uh, so it makes it a little bit easier, I think, to keep those separate when you're running those. Um, theoretically, you can run for only one replenishment method. Uh, obviously, this works with up to min-max. It works with all of them. I recommend, unless you have a very specific reason not to, I recommend just running them with all. Um, and for the same reason, you can also narrow it down to just an item. Um, I don't know why you would run that by item, but some people do. Uh, the last thing I want to cover on this screen, uh, as far as options go, is the show all items. Obviously, if I generate this right now, based on my requirements, it's only going to show me what I need to purchase. If I click show all items, it's going to show me every single item that is assigned to this supplier for this location, regardless if I need to purchase it or not. Um, we're not going to do that for our basic one, but it is a way if you do want to add some additional items um, that are not technically required by the system. Um, but for this purpose, we're going to leave that as this. And so I'm just going to give it a name just that I can call it location 20 and I'm going to call it a uh, sample vendor and I'll put the vendor ID in there. Y you can name it, whatever I recommend naming it, something that obviously will help you search and find it. Um, and then you just click save here to save that criteria. So now if I come back in here and I know, oh, I'm going to be purchasing for my sample vendor, I can start typing that in. And if I did have them for multiple locations in here, I could type in, you know, space 20 and it would start filtering it down. Um, so just make them uh, what you're accustomed to, uh, to calling these things. It just helps you out a lot. The last thing I want to cover in this video is on the factors tab. There's really only one piece of data that I recommend anybody really mess with. And it's the usage factor. And the reason I say this is because it's the easiest to understand. So essentially, if you're wanting to say, hey, I want the system to forecast an extra 10% of what it thinks I need, you simply just type in 1.1 and that'll come into play in your calculations. It'll increase your daily forecasted usage by 10%. Uh, so if you were forecasting to use 100 a day, you ran it like this, it's going to tell you you're going to need 110 a day. It's just a quick and easy way to kind of pad those numbers. Um, really, I don't really recommend using a lot of different things in here and some of them i still can't get to work 100 percent right um so that covers creating a criteria um, a little bit on the factors tab uh, if you have questions about this 
or you want to see videos and some other stuff, put comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe. Stay tuned. I got more pork videos coming. And as always, Atlas is here for your P21 needs.